All right, let's talk about postpartum hemorrhage. <coughs> this is a um, or exam topic number four point one stash E evaluate, diagnose, and manage postpartum hemorrhage. So let's take a look. It's also one of the practice bulletin um, 183. So how do we define postpartum hemorrhage? Currently, we only use um, one liter as the uh, cutoff. Doesn't matter the route of the delivery or if they have signs and symptoms of hypovolemia within the 24 hours after delivery. It occurs um, about 2% of birth. Some of the risk factors, um, if you have prolonged labor, if you have augmented labor, rapid uh, precipitous delivery, history of postpartum hemorrhage, if you had a me medial lateral episiotomy, okay, preeclampsia, um, if you had a over distended uterus due to macrosomia or twins or hydro hydramnios, polyhydramnios, <coughs> If you had operative delivery, Asian descent, and you have some kind of infection such as chorio, um, we'll talk about etiology in a bit. So initial evaluation, um, you want to do a bimanual exam and vaginal exam to determine the cause of the hemorrhage, check for hematoma. Um, you can do an ultrasound just to take a look at retained products. Um, check for coagulopathies. If the patient had HELP syndrome, patient had um, placental abruption, um, infection, and sometimes uh, amniotic fluid embolism can cause um, DIC as well. Um, we should probably also uh, get some lab work such as CBC, PTT, INR, and fibrinogen. Usually um, less than 150, the blood cannot clot outside of the body, but I think anything less than 200 mg per deciliter is uh, con concerning for DIC. Let me double check that. Let's see if I can find that out real quick. Let's see, fibrin, fibrinogen. Yeah, 200, low fibrinogen level, less than 200 is predictive of severe postpartum hemorrhage. Okay. So compare it with patients with fibrinogen greater than 300, patients with fibrinogen between 200 and 300, uh, double the odds for postpartum hemorrhage, and a 12 times, um, 12 fold odds for uh, less than 200. with hemoglobin decreasing greater than four grams per deciliter. 
So yeah, 200 is the Two hundred. Very suspicious. The IC. All right. So, what are some of the ideologies? Um, usually, we break it down to primary and secondary. For primary, there are um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possible causes. The most common, about 75% of the cases of postpartum hemorrhage is caused by uterine amni. In this case, we can use um, uh, uterine tonics such as uh, methogen, hemabate, or cytotec. For methogen, we can use um, 0 0.2 milligrams IMQ4 times six doses. Uh, contraindications include hypertension, coronary artery disease, and Raynaud's syndrome. We can also use hemopate with a uh, uh, 0 0.25 milligram IMQ 15 minutes with a max dose of 2 milligrams, which is 8 doses. Um, the con <coughs> contraindication will be asthma for that one, and then we can use. Uh, misoprostol 400 to 800 microgram sublingually uh, acts faster versus um, PO or rectally higher dose can cause fevers um, so next uh, drugs we can use will be uh, TXA, we can give one gram IV, um, usually as most effective, given three hours um, within delivery. If the medications doesn't work, we can try to use um, some, type of some type of tepanodding device, uh, such as Bacri balloon, we can fill it up to 300 to 500 cc's of saline. Um, we can use Foley catheters with uh, six, uh, 60 cc bulbs inserted into the uterus. Uh, vaginal packing uh, using gau uh, four by four gauze soaked in 5,000 5, units of thrombin and five cc saline. Uterine, ar uterine artery um, embolization will be the next step. We can um, usually it's um, for persistent um, bleeding that's not severe. Um, there's a eighty percent success rate with fifteen percent risk for um, surgery requiring uh, hysterectomies. Side effects include. Uterine necrosis, DVT, peripheral neuropathy, um, and infertility up to 50% of patients. S um, next step will be surgery. If you had a vaginal delivery, um, midline vertical incision will probably be better for access to the uterus. Um, hypogastric artery ligation is not performed that much anymore. We can use uh, urine artery ligation or O'Leary sutures. Um, B Lynch suture with a number one chromic. Um, for rapid 
um, absorption of the suture after the uh, uterus involutes to prevent bowel herniation. We can use a uh, square suturing. The next um, cause, next uh, next possible cause, will be uh, vaginal uh, lacerations or cervical lacerations. Um, uh, number three of causes will be hematomas. We can, um, with hematomas, we can, uh, most, of the, most of the time, we can just um, observe if the hematoma is stable. Um, if not, we can consider arterial, arterial embolization before we open up the hematoma. Deterioration of maternal vitals without obvious bleeding can indicate retroperitoneal bleeding. In that case, we might need to do a, um, a CT to evaluate the retroperitoneal space or intraperitoneal space. <coughs> uh, cause number four, Taint placenta. Um, if we see an echogenic mass on ultrasound, that's highly suspicious for retained products. Uh, we can use uh, banjo carrier with ultrasound guidance due to risk of perforation. Next, we'll next. Um, Cause number five would be accreta, which is caused by invasion of the uh, placental tissue. Usually we see an absence of uh, decidual basalis or the netabuck layer. Risk factors, um, placenta previa, prior um, pelvic, sur uh, pelvic um, uterine surgeries, such as myomectomy, cesarean. <coughs> if you had a, a, a previa, the risk of you having a creta uh, increases when you undergo cesarean with the first um, cesarean at 3%, second at 11%, third C-section you'll have a 40% risk of accreta, uh, fourth C-section 60%, risk of accreta, fifth C-section, 67% rate of accreta. If you had um, prior cesarean but no previa, first cesarean, there's 0.2% risk, second cesarean, 0.3%, third C-section, 0.6%, Fourth C section, point one per two point one per cent, fifth C section, two point three per cent, and sixth C session, you have a seven point seven per cent risk for accreta. But if you have a accreta and previa, you have sixty per cent at number five C section. Focal creta, if the patient desires fertility, there's a, um, you can counsel the patient that there's a 40% risk for emergent hysterectomy and 
the risk of uh, recurrent abnormal adherent placenta in the next pregnancy is about 20%. In uh, accreted cases, usually we should del uh, deliver these patients at 34 weeks after steroids. Um, postpartum hemorrhage causes number six. You have um, acute coagulopathies causing DIC. Uh, one of the causes of DIC could be placental abruption, um, especially if you have cuvalier uh, uterus, where the blood has gone into the myometrium, leading to adenine. Patient usually has um, vaginal bleeding, frequent uterine contractions, and pain. Uh, another cause of uh, acute coagulopathy would be amniotic fluid embolism. Patients usually have hemodynamic or respiratory compromise along with uh, signs of DIC. Um, another cause of Postpartum hemorrhage will be uterine inversion, usually occurs uh, in one in four thousand vaginal deliveries and one in two thousand cesareans. Um, if you had a prior inversion, the risk is one in thirty in the subsequent deliveries. If you have inversion prior to placental separation. Do not try to remove the placenta as it can cause uh, severe hemorrhage. Can, we can use um, uterine relaxants such as ter, max sulfate, halogenated general anesthetics or nitroglycerin to relax the uterus. We can also <coughs> perform hunting procedure where um, after the laparotomy we can um, progressively provide upward traction with uh, Alice clamp or Babcock clamp on the inverted corpus or we can use we can do halting procedure where in we incise the cervix posteriorly to create more room to uh, push the um, uterus back into the right position. The seventh um, ideology for postpartum hemorrhage will be uterine rupture. Um, secondary causes which is um, postpartum hemorrhage, uh, 24 to 12 weeks postpartum, usually occurs 1% of the pregnancies. We could have a uh, sub-evolution of placenta sites, retained product of conception, endometritis, which we can use clinda and gentamicin, inherited coagulopathies such as von Willebrand's disease. So four causes for secondary. If we initiate blood transfusion, we need to uh, consider transfusion when um, the blood loss is greater than 1.5 liters or the patient is symptomatic with uh, tachycardia and hypotension. 
massive transfusion uh, definition is uh, 10 units of packed red blood cells in 24 hours or within the one hour span uh, four units of PRBC has been given um, and patient continues to need more blood products. Usually the best ratio for blood, uh, blood products should be one RBC, one FFP, and one platelet. Adverse effect uh, for giving blood products, uh, it can lead to hyperkalemia and hypocalcemia. Um, there could be transfusion, febrile, non hemolytic reactions. We see that uh, in one out of a thousand transfusions. The next severe will be acute hemolytic transfusion reaction. We see that in 0.2 out of 1,000 uh, transfusions. The next step will be um, acute transfusion related lung injuries or trolley. We see that in 0.2%, uh, 0.1 out of 1,000 transfusions. We could have infection with hepatitis um, and HIV. These are very rare, uh, one in a million uh, transfusions. If patient um, has anemia due to blood loss but uh, is stable, um, we can consider transfusion transfusion after um, the hemoglobin is less than seven grams per deciliter, and and the patient has symptoms, we can transfuse one unit at a time. If the patient is seven uh, gram per deciliter but has no symptoms, we can individu individualize the uh, treatment. Uh, we can consider giving uh, IV iron or oral iron. With IV iron, the uh, hemoglobin does tend to increase uh, um, a little bit more within the two weeks. We see a 2.5 um, increase with IV iron versus 1.5 with oral, but at 40 days there is no difference. So what is in the uh, blood products? So P for PRBC, usually it's 240 mLs, which contains red blood cell, white blood cell, and plasma. Platelets usually is uh, 50 mLs that contains platelets, red blood cell, red white blood cell products, and platelet a uh, plasma. Plus, uh, platelets can increase. One unit of uh, platelets can increase um, patients' uh, serum platelet by five to ten thousand per unit. Fresh frozen, fresh, uh, frozen. Plasma, usually about 250 mLs, containing fibrinogen, antithrombin 3, factor 5, factor 8, 5 and 8. It increases fibrinogen by about 10 milligrams per deciliter. Prior precipitates 40 mil 
40 cc's containing fibrinogen factor 8 13 and von Willebrand factor increase fibrinogen level by 10 as well um, there are also recombinant factors 7 which uh, currently only approved to be used for uh, hemophilia A and B so that's it for um, postpartum hemorrhage